Okay, there we go, I guess. So, oh, I started to the salvo again as a spectroscopist, he tells me. I first heard about him when I was visiting Parnell, talking to high energy experimenters there, and they told me about this guy. He had converted into a high energy experiment and had spent some time at Parnell. Uh, and they told him what, me what an interesting and bright fellow he is. And, uh, wow. <laughs> and then uh, he went back to Italy. Uh, well, he worked, uh, I guess, at CERN for a while. And, uh, was back in Italy and uh, got pulled into the uh, Virgo gravitational wave detection uh, effort uh, at the Pisa, and uh, was involved in uh, the design of the very sophisticated seismic isolation system that they have in Pisa. And then he was attracted here to Caltech, where he is uh, taking the lead on seismic isolation issues for LIGO. And so. Uh, yeah, uh, saying that this thing doesn't uh, get there, it may be getting there. Hmm. Got stuck there. Oh, here yeah, it's coming. There. Good. Took a little bit longer to get there. So, uh, first thing which I can, what is for me and doesn't matter. Uh, the question is, uh, why do we need uh, seismic attenuation for gravitational wave interferometric detection? Uh, detectors. Uh, we have a ground motion that is typically a micron continuously, sometimes even 10 micron. And uh, gravitational signal is 10 to minus 18, 10 to minus 20. So one is a little bit swamped by, just slightly <laughs> swamped by the, by the ground motion. And so you need uh, a, well, I am exaggerating maybe, but it's 10 to minus 10, 10 to minus 12 uh, uh, and it's an attenuation factor. And the question is, how do I fill up this uh, 10 to minus 12 uh, uh, um, attenuation gap? And that is with a seismic attenuation and suspension system. They are typically thought as two separate systems. I, I look at them as a single integrated system. So how do you make the, uh, oscill the, the attenuation? See, I have an oscillator here. Uh, you make a pendulum, OK? And uh, a pendulum has a resonant frequency. But if you shake it rapidly, apart from the resonance of the, of the wire, yeah, I stole the balls from you. <laughs> we just can't see the OK, sorry. Uh, 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 the, the high frequency vibrations transmit very poorly through the pendulum. So this pendulum is an, uh, an, uh, a natural uh, attenuator in two degrees of freedom, the two horizontal degrees of freedoms. And, uh, and uh, it works very well, actually, apart from the resonances of the wire that also you have to take uh, care, but if the wire is very light, it doesn't matter really. And uh, what it has, it has uh, at uh, low frequency. If I, if I carry it around, it just follows me at low frequency. Uh, OK? And so at low frequency, it is flat. It, uh, transfer function is 1. If you go at, uh, at, uh, at the resonant frequency, and I uh, excited the resonant frequency, just follow and have a resonance that depends on the Q, can be either low or high. And beyond the resonant frequency, it attenuates like omega square. And actually, uh, like omega zero over omega square. So you gain in two ways. Uh, uh, if you uh, start with omega square at low frequency uh, farther away, you get attenuation earlier. So that's, uh, that's important, OK? And uh, the Q factor is important. At the end, we will discuss that about that if we have time. Uh, but so you gain in frequency, so it goes like omega, omega, omega 0 over, over omega square. And so you get attenuation factor obtain it in frequency. And it works. I mean, uh, uh, if you just uh, take a one meter long pendulum like this, it oscillated half an hertz. And uh, at half a mega hertz, you get the 10 to minus 12 attenuation that you want. However, <laughs> there's not much signal left at half a mega hertz, so it doesn't work. Just a single pendulum like this doesn't work, really. So what you want to do is a chain of oscillators. And uh, a chain of oscillators, you just multiply their responses. I didn't take all the resonances, only the, the fall off of it. And so with six of those, you get an omega, uh, omega 12. I just put in six for historical reasons. So now uh, people use less than six for other, OK? And that works fine. 
Okay, so at the half an hertz, and this is, for example, true in, uh, in Virgo, if you have oscillator at half an hertz, uh, at, at five hertz, you already get the attenuation 10 to the 12 that you're looking for. And, uh, so, and you have a big premium at starting at low frequency, that means making this pendulum long. And uh, to start at half an hertz resonant frequency, you need a one meter long pendulum. And then you have a big premium on making a, long, a lot of pendula. But what I described here is already a six meter tall chain, which is exactly what Virgo has. And it works great, but it is gigantic. And, yeah. and this is what Virgo can do. So it has many noise levels. What is important, this one is what the seismic attenuation is six meter tall, six uh, layer uh, seismic attenuation chain. And if you see here at about uh, three or four hertz, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it hits all the other noises, which is uh, thermal noise of a, of a last, uh, uh, of a pendulum of it that supports the mirror. And then there is a gravity gradient, which nobody knows if it is higher and lower. We will see. And then there is a thermal noise of a mirror that you heard about already. So you make a nice uh, chain of pendula, you think you are done. The problem of an horizontal pendulum is that it, it attenuates only horizontally. Okay? And when you say, well, the interferometer is horizontal, so what? The problem is that every pendulum uh, is points down to Earth. And so they are not parallel. They all converge to, to the center of Earth. And uh, in LIGO, this angle is 4, 10 to minus 4. Uh, and mechanics of this pendula is hard to balance them better than 10 to minus 3. So you have a beautiful 10 to minus uh, uh, omega to minus 12 uh, attenuation behavior, but will saturate at 10 to the 3 typically. So if you only make a pendulum that oscillates horizontally, it doesn't help you much. You have to attenuate in all six degrees of freedom of the body. Okay? And uh, so you want something that oscillates also in the vertical. You want an oscillator in the vertical, in the tilt, in the yaw, in the pitch, in all of them. Okay? And if you can do that, you preserve this attenuation factor forever in all the degrees of freedom. So what you do, uh, pendulum goes in two directions, but attached to the pendulum, there is a mass. And now this mass can oscillate in this direction, and it can oscillate in all the other directions three directions. So just making a standard mass as the bob of your pendulum and hanging it from the center of mass uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the bob uh, will solve your problems. Okay? Five of, out of six. The difficult one is the sixth dimension is vertical because now you're working against gravity. Okay? So what you want to do, you want to take something, attach it to a spring, and now this one, you see, it, it works very well, even vertically. I'm oscillating a lot vertically, and you see that down below is, 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 uh, it's uh, transmitting much less, except for the resonances of this, blade, of, this, uh, of this spring. This spring has lots of resonances, and it has a lots of mass, so it can transmit lots of energy to this ball down there. A wire is much lighter, can transmit much less energy. So this spring, it's almost good, it, uh, it works, but also think this massive spring is holding a little ball. If I was to attach any massive uh, mirror to it, okay, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so somehow we have to find helical springs are not good enough for what we want to do. And, uh, and uh, for, for all of this, they have large distributed mass. They tend to rotate when it comes down. They want to be very long, and they have lots of resonances that transmit energy. So they are not good. So what people have done have used cantilever blades. Now, this blade is quite robust. You can play with, and you can hang here quite some mass, and it has a relatively low resonance. This one, when it is loaded, it is flat. This is one of the Virgo blades. Uh, and uh, Tama has similar blades. And it is good. The problem is, it is also stiff. And we want it slow. We want it to oscillate a half an hertz or below. And how do you convince this stiff blade to become soft? And the trick is to take two blades, you point one against the other. There are other tricks. One point one against the other, and this point, the two blades that are compressed one against the other tend to escape above and below. 
So they have a component of anti-spring, but the more I compress, the more anti-spring component I have. And by tuning the radial compression, I can balance the vertical uh, um, uh, spring constant with the, uh, with the anti-spring constant and get this system to oscillate as low as we want as in frequency. So how do you do? We have uh, several examples. This one you can see, it's a reasonable big one. You put me as a scale down there to show that this one is big and it holds uh, uh, almost a person down there. And you can make it very small. This one is one of the small springs that uh, you find holding directly the mirror box of Tama. There are four of these and this one holds about a kilo. Uh, each of these. So, and uh, all the play is to move these uh, slats closer until the vertical frequency is as low as you want. And yes, you can do well. This one is the small springs that you have seen there, and you can tune them at 250 milliards, even below, even lower than what you wanted was a target, let's say, of half an ounce of uh, oscillation to match a one meter long pendulum. So that is feasible. And what does a spring like this do? Uh, a spring uh, made uh, with, uh, in, uh, in this way have uh, a transfer function. Look, it's uh, up to here is exactly what was the, uh, the response of a spring. It, is, uh, it has a resonance, and then it falls like 1 over f squared. This one is the mathematical response. And then down at some point, it saturates. Over there is just the noise of a, uh, of a detector that doesn't see. And it saturates because at high frequency, this spring will uh, act as a free body in space. So when an uh, oscillation uh, moves it up and down in, in, in here, it will oscillate around a certain button center, and, and the tip will, uh, will recoil backwards. So what you see here is a saturation due to the fact that there is a residual rigidity and a distributed mass in the blade. And uh, that is. Uh, a, a, a function on how much you stress the material and how do you distribute it. But this is a measured setup and is a, an attenuation of thousand per layer. It means that uh, if you, uh, that's what I was telling you, that you uh, uh, essentially every layer you can attenuate a factor of thousand and no more possibly. So, uh, what do you do with those? Well, you build a system. Here I'm showing the uh, Tama 3 meter uh, uh, test. Uh, 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 towers, Tama has decided in uh, what is three years from now to install a system that will look pretty much like this. This is a prototype of it. So what you see is an inverted pendulum uh, attached on ground that can oscillate at 50 milliards or below. Then uh, you see here, you don't only see one blade, but uh, this one is a three blade system for the vertical uh, oscillation. So uh, and then it is attached to a second filter which also has the same sort of blades into it. So it has a second uh, the, uh, um, um, vertical attenuation. But at the same time, it's also a pendulum in this direction, and it's a pendulum in tilt, yo, and, uh, and pitch. And then attached to that, there is a, another box, which inside contains these little springs here. These little springs are right there. Okay? Uh, and they then contain an intermediate mass and uh, a, a mirror and concentric recoil mass. This part here becomes very complex. This is all passive, essentially. And this part here is all complex because in here there are two layers of controls that allow to position this, the mirror in space with a precision of 10 to well, minus 12 meters or something like this. Absolute. And then uh, uh, above uh, 10 hertz, this system is quiet at 10 to minus 18 or, plus or, or less hertz. And uh, this is what it looks in real life, just to show you. And that is uh, when we are getting ready to, 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 to send it out. And on top here, there is lots of instrumenta instrumentation, which are position sensors, we'll come back to it, and accelerometers that are actually used to kill the main resonances of a system that uh, I mentioned to you. And. Uh, here is as uh, uh, Akiteru, we, who is uh, finishing his thesis on, on a Fabri Perot mounted on, this, uh, on two towers of this kind, as he is installing it in the Hongo campus uh, um, almost a month, a year ago now, uh, more than a year ago now. And he's uh, just about wrapping it up now, so we'll see what it is. Um, unfortunately, when you have materials, like this. You take a material, 
and uh, you hang on it. You put stress into this. Now you have many layers. You start at 10 to minus 12 meters, and then you put another layer to go 10 to minus uh, sorry, 10 to minus 6, 10 to minus uh, 12, 10 to minus 15, 10 to minus 18. You go down every time by two or three orders of magnitude in 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 vibration in uh, in vibration. For what is the vibration comes out from outside, but this blade will be compressed, and the stress which is inside this blade will slowly release in some ways, and and will produce acoustic emission. We call it acoustic emission because you put the microphone there, you hear it. Wow, metal under stress makes noise. And what causes this? Uh, this is a blade before I stress it. These ones are the crystals, the grains in the metal, uh, immediately after I stress it. And they get a uniform stress. The stress is uniform across this crystal, okay? But now there are zillions of dislocations to this crystal. This crystal has uh, 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 10 to the uh, 20 atoms into it, and it has mo many dislocations. That, uh, and this dislocation, under the stress, will, uh, if they get excited by the thermal fluctuation, will move to the edge of a crystal and will concentrate the stress to the edge of a crystal. At, and then this stress material will click back. So. Two crystals inside there will click, and we can hear it. Make this noise. Actually, make exactly this noise. Uh, and then the other crystal will, will pick up the corresponding stress, so it will be redistributed. They go a little bit more in stress, and some other crystal will click elsewhere. And this one, in the springs of your car, goes on forever. In fact, after 30 years, you want to change the spring of your car, because it just sits down. And we don't want that. First thing, we don't want to put the mirror down on the ground. Uh, it's an expensive mirror. And second, we don't want the noise. So while at the beginning, at the top of a tower, we could use roughly any material, as we go deeper in the attenuation sequence, uh, we have to have better and better material, and we have to switch to materials that don't have this process here to make this noise. So, because otherwise, this will be our dominant source. And, uh, that is what, uh, just to show that it is real, I put a microphone on a piece of a blade like this, and I listen to, and this is in a matter of hours, and this is a frequency of clicks. So beginning, uh, I get uh, clicks at about, uh, 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 actually this is the inverse of the frequency, the time between, uh, sorry, is it inverse of frequency? I should have done it the contrary. Uh, it would have been much worse if I... Um, so these ones are seconds between clicks. So beginning I have one click uh, per second, and then uh, after uh, half an hour I have ten click, uh, one tenth of a click, one, one click every ten seconds, then one click every hundred seconds, and then with time my situation improves. Uh, down there I have one click every, every thousand seconds out of a blade like this. And if I treat a blade like this properly, I will bring it to have no clicks anymore uh, every day. Okay, and there are uh, processes that we do this. But this is when in already in a, in a good blade. Uh, in a, if I was to use the steel of your car, I would have a kilohertz of clicks continuously, continuously. And this is, so this is a solution. It's not the problem, although it has some problem at the beginning. So what is the solution that we have found here? We use uh, special mater materials uh, that are hardened by precipitation, which freeze the dislocation inside the volume of a, of a, of a grain. The dislocation does not move to the surface of the grain anymore. And, uh, and so we stop this acoustic emission. And this is good enough for all the mechanical part of a seismic attenuation, but close to the mirror, uh, we cannot even allow the movement of dislocation because that also uh, uh, we, we also produce some other sort of noise. So we have to give up the crystalline uh, materials altogether and use glassy materials in the mirror and the mirror suspension, like uh, uh, quartz fibers and quartz for the mirror or uh, or perfect crystals. And uh, so that is what we have to do. But let's go back. At the, this thing, how do we freeze the material on the mechanical structure? And um, what did I do here? Uh, oh, I jumped. I missed uh, one transparency. Well, there is one missing. Doesn't matter. Or maybe it is displaced. 
Um, fine. So I wanted to mention the problem of resonances. I did uh, show you in the in the in the curve that uh, I have an attenuation of the four attenuation of the resonances in which uh, the the mirror uh, oscillates uh, quite a long distance. Okay, and uh, you have and they. Um, the problem is that uh, the sensitive uh, the sensor that we are using down in the in the interferometers uh, have a, a very cl a small dynamic range. Okay, and. Uh, because we have to reach very high sensitivities. 10 to minus 20 is what uh, our uh, gravitational wave will give to us. So even if our uh, mass down there, our mirror, is quiet to 10 to minus 18, 10 to minus 20 meters uh, above 10 hertz, uh, at, at the resonance frequency of half an hertz, uh, I have to keep it from oscillating in, in the resonance frequency. And the answer to this is to introduce somehow a uh, damping to the resonances, okay, uh, to to stop all the reson mechanical resonances, so the mirror essentially stops uh, down at uh, at the suspension point. And there are many different uh, strategies, either inertia or viscous, active or passive. Um, essentially, all the experiment, uh, all the places differ for for this. And telling you a little bit about viscous damping, because this one we are doing over here, just at the bottom, uh, end of a hole. This one is a LIGO stack, okay, as it is now. And this is made with springs, helical springs, that we should not use, but they have been used in LIGO stacks. And uh, they are attached, well, in this case, it's really on ground. They normally are on a cleaner environment. And then we have intermediate masses. Uh, and there is another spring in here that you can see, and then there is an optical bench. And uh, uh, the, what is killing now LIGO is that this system resonates with an IQ, Q about uh, 30, and uh, we need to uh, take, uh, sense this oscillation and dump it, so uh, the, we can actually uh, give a chance to the, to, the, to the nice systems that you heard before to actually grab the mirror and position it to, uh, to better than 10 to minus 12. So how we did we de we studied this? Uh, we have uh, mounted in here a position sensor, uh, which is an LVDT in which I have a, 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 an, an emitter coil that emits at 10 kilohertz and two opposite uh, receiver co coils, and I read them in uh, in synchronous. And uh, with this instrument, we can read uh, nanometers or better than nanometer, even picometers if you reduce the dynamic range. And we put it in feedback with a forcer, a very high precision forcer that does not transmit the ground for vibration. It's a derivative. It's a concept the same of a voice coil, but it has a funny shape, not to transmit the residual uh, vibration of ground. And we put this in feedback between uh, 0.1 and, uh, and, uh, and 3 hertz. And uh, we pick up the resonances of this table and then dump it. And uh, in fact, that is what we have done recently. This one is the resonances without with a, with a dumping off. And when we, we switch the loop gain on, you see that those resonances are dumped uh, and become uh, uh, very short. And the, and the system cannot be uh, excited anymore because it has no resonances. And we did it with uh, six degrees of freedom. In other places, like uh, uh, in, uh, in Tama, um, the, um, the resonances are, are read out from the beginning of a tower, and uh, they are made inertially. That means that instead of sensing the position movement, uh, one senses the acceleration of, uh, of the top mass of a chain. Since the whole chain will recoil like a snake, the top always moves for every, uh, every mode. So from the top, you can sense all the modes. And if you use the sensor, uh, acceleration sensor at the top and the same uh, actuator forces here, these are the same forces that you have seen before, um, you can actually dump the position of, uh, of, the, of the mirror and uh, stabilize the suspension point uh, to uh, the required, uh, required level. And this one that I'm show, uh, showing here is an accelerometer, in, uh, which is a monolithic accelerometer, in which here you have a bob, and here you have two arms, one a pendulum, one an inverted pendulum. It has sensors in, in here, and it has a feedback, internal force feedback. And uh, you work on the feedback 
to keep this uh, pendulum uh, stable in uh, um, uh, this bob stable inside its case, and uh, and uh, by definition, the force that you have to do on it. Uh, to keep it stable within the case is equal to the acceleration to which the case is subjected. So this one is an accelerometer which is mounted over there to dump uh, resonances of a chain. And that is uh, about the end of it. Uh, there is much more in seismic attenuation, but, uh, uh, and you can see lo uh, several examples of this over in the synchrotron where we have our laboratory. You're welcome to come over. And then uh, if you have questions. Yes. Ricardo, what happened to the idea of using a magnet coil with a frequency dependent negative resistor? Oh, that is. Uh, uh, I repeat the question. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting uh, idea from uh, the Japanese group, and uh, they just recently published uh, the result. The idea is. Uh, you can make dumping very simply by uh, uh, taking a magnet and uh, hanging it over a metal surface, and then you have eddy current dumping, which is uh, uh, which works as uh, a um, 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 velocity dumping. However, you are limited by the fact that uh, the, 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 the biggest current that you can get into these materials are limited uh, by the resistivity of the material. So you try to use the best conductive material you have, uh, copper or, uh, or uh, aluminum, uh, but they still have a finite uh, um, re resistivity. The next uh, idea is you take a coil a mechanical coil, which has an even higher resistance, but then you mount it in chain uh, uh, in series with an operational amplifier with a negative resistance. You put that negative resistance, tune it so you go close to zero, and then you optimize the dumping of the system. And uh, it, uh, it actually, um, I can give you a paper because I just uh, re got it for review, uh, internal review, primary review, before the publish, and they sent it out. Uh, now, I guess. Harima, actually, can, she's, not, she's not here today, but she's one of the authors, so she can tell you about it. Yes? So you, you showed a photograph showing the springs and masses mm -hmm. uh, in the LIGO, uh, LIGO 1 isolation. Yes. So can you just comment, are those springs then to control horizontal motions? They are both to control the horizontal and vertical motion. Uh, then, uh, if you look at uh, pictures, actually, um, the, icons, the vertical frequencies must be very high. That is exactly where most of the problem problem is, because uh, uh, it is pre hertz. Yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, actually they are quite fixed. So even horizontally, they are reasonably stiff. Uh, it is an uh, order of two to three hertz uh, vertically, and uh, and uh, less and uh, order of an, an hertz horizontally. And even the first horizontal in reality is a sort of a pitch mode, so it's partially vertical. It's a system in which horizontal, vertical, and tilt are all messed up together. It's not diagonal in any, by any stretch of imagination. In a, in a suspended system, uh, this motion and this motion and the rotation are almost diagonal. But it's playing the same role as a pendulum would horizontally, or the same role as your candle. Yes, would. yes. And as long as you have all of the six degrees of freedom, the fact that they mix, it doesn't harm too much. It harms when you try to understand what's happening and you try to control the system and dump the system. But The uh, uh, glitches that you have, some strain release. Yes. Uh, how large is the motion that, that induces in a LIGO mirror? Is it big enough to see that in the gravity wave readout? In, uh, uh, I never calculated for LIGO, but uh, on a, uh, um, uh, also the glitches that you see are, uh, are by nature refractal. They come at all different amplitude at uh, decreasing uh, frequency. Um, if you have uh, the 1% of the energy of a crystal uh, that uh, release, 
uh, is released and uh, and you have uh, a hundred kilo mass it goes down if i remember correctly by 10 to minus nine meters so that's very big yes so one crystal that released that energy just uh, and uh, so it's uh, quite catastrophic if it happens and that's why we developed this uh, we used uh, whenever there is stress we use this uh, maraging steel which uh, has uh, controlled these locations and that uh, seems to, to uh, eliminate the whole problem you have to load it bake it so you completely release it uh, uh, we, we make a bake out at 80 degrees uh, um, for a uh, day is equivalent of uh, 100,000 years of uh, improvement and you have seen in that picture which I have an inverted scale uh, that uh, already a weekend was improving two orders of magnitude beginning you improve rapidly later you improve lo is a logarithmic gain but uh, um, uh, it can be done so that uh, b beyond a certain level you always define it as beyond a certain level and uh, uh, etc but you can say at uh, uh, beyond a, a given level I bring the clicks be below one times per day that's uh, how you do it you cannot do differently because there is always some life into blades like this it's not that matter other questions okay so uh, let me just say that uh, the uh, reading for next week. Uh, we're going to put some copies out. Paper on the web that we put on earlier this week uh, that uh, was provided to us by Eric Black. I'll see you next week then.